very good morning all well today we would be starting again with the second part of the uh, communication and today we would be talking about types of communication and when we are talking about the types of communication i am sure you know uh, we would uh, get many things into the mind when we are talking about the types might be uh, writing might be uh, messaging all these things because yes those are the type of communications we have but again when we segregate them into an official manner and then again in depth we would go talking about in each category what are sub categories that come fine so today we would be talking about the types of communication and when we are talking about the types of communication we have verbal and non verbal communication so when we are talking about the communication it we have verbal and non verbal fine so when we are talking about verbal and non verbal verbal communication what is verbal communication verbal communication is in which words are used and it is it could be even the spoken part or the written part in which we are communicating through speaking or writing we are able to pass a message in some language in some method that at least we are able to convey it and pass it to someone that is verbal communication so in again when we are talking about the verbal communication it is verbal communication is when piece of mouth or any return is used fine so again in verbal we have oral communication and written communication so again in detail we would talk about both but then when we are talking about the verbal communication we have to follow an acronym we have to follow an acronym that is kiss so what is kiss it is kiss is keep it short and simple any message that we are passing it if it is short and simple it's understood better so when we are talking about kiss it is keep it this method keeping it short and simple the acronym kiss is useful in and uh, actually in a in a official and non official way because see when any message passed in a short and a simple way it's understood in a better manner and it saves our time both fine so anything either either we are writing it or we are speaking it it has to be short and simple like we have that you know uh, official mail and other things when we write it if i am going to elaborate the mail and write the whole big story do you think officially if i am writing it someone is going to ha have that much time to read it no but if i keep it short and simple i am sure they would immediately they would get the real message what they want that yes she is only for so and so reason and it is not that it if it is in long this thing the person has to search subject i have written but again they have to search what is the reason for the leave instead let me make it short and simple so please 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 follow the kiss press acronym for a verbal communication why during this uh, what to say during verbal communication again you know when we are speaking something when we are talking something we assume or we think that opposite person is understanding the what i am speaking in the way i want fine it is i who knows because i am teaching i know what am i teaching what am i speaking 
fine so what am i speaking i know it and what is the message behind it i know it but again the opposite person understands it according to their understanding one then according to their attitude their perception so when we are speaking something we have to convey the message accordingly according to the people opposite to us if suppose i am talking to group of people i have to understand that what is the common way and a general way that everyone would understand it in a simple manner and again keep it simple and like sweet and simple so that the person can easily understand it easily grasp it fine so when we are talking we we assume that the person is under, pers, person is understanding the way i want to many times you know we just i want to give a speech i want to give a training i have just passed the message i have given the training i don't even try to understand if the person is understand or understood or not so that is not the right way we have to and we have to convey the message or talk as per the people the crowd that we have and so that they understand they understand what message we really want to pass and you know when they understand the message then it is that yes you have actually communicated what you wanted to communicate in a proper manner that is a perfect communication that we would call otherwise it is again lack of communication we have fine if it is not properly done it is lack of communication and when it is lack of communication there are misunderstandings that tend to happen and we don't want that anything is misunderstood so there are the adverse effects of what we want to convey so guys when we are talking about communication if it is simple and sweet it doesn't make doesn't create havoc or misunderstandings and if we match the opposite people the maximum crowd that we are into when our language is simple yes it makes the learning easy the teaching easy fine so we would do that and then when now when we are talking about the verbal communication verbal communication is again divided into verbal communication is when we are looking into this it is one we have oral and second is written fine so it is again oral communication when we are talking about guys when we are talking about the oral communication in oral communication words are used even in written communication words are used but the difference is in oral communication we have the words used face to face addressing the person talking to someone and the conversation like even if we call telephonic conversation even that is verbal communication face to face conversation nowadays we have the zoom meetings the like internet online chat or online talking that communication is even under oral communication that we would say the television and those things even those if we are counting it those are counted under oral communication fine oral communication we are able to the person is able to see us even if not able to see us hear us fine like we have the telephonic call and other things where the person is able to hear us and that is this is all the oral communication when we are talking about the oral communication we will have to take care of our pitch 
our rate of speech yes pitch our rate of speech our intonation so when we are talking about when we are when we have a verbal communication what is important is mainly when we are talking about our pitch has to be in a manner where it, it really looks professional humble gentle and really like heartfelt the pitch if my pitch goes high you would feel this is not the right way how can you talk like this to me this is the first thing that you would get in mind if my pitch goes high this is not the right way that you are talking or understand like teaching even if teaching talking whatever we call that would not be the right way so a pitch has to be moderate low or moderate but never high fine then when second thing when we are talking about our tone our tone quality has to be really good loud and clear why loud and clear so that opposite yes when we are talking about apart from that tone quality tone quality has to be good because it has to be loud and clear loud and clear see if my tone is low suppose you are talking to someone an official call you have suddenly received a call for interview or something you are talking in a low tone what would happen this opposite person would feel is he is a lazy person his tone is too low his energy level is low so this would first go into the mind when your tone is low so your tone quality even has to be equally good then rate of speech guys rate of speech is again very very important how today when we are having a session let me give the best example is in session if in session if i'm rushing in rushing up with the thing if i increase my rate of speech like let me give an example please take it as an example guys uh, it's just for so the rate of speech many of you in common we have our rate of speech is high or too low if your rate of speech is too low it looks you are lethargic your energy levels are low and if your rate of speech is high again it is the person would not be able to understand the message that you want to pass and even will not be able to understand what you are speaking so your rate of speech has to be again moderate neither too low nor too fast and apart from that guys when in oral communication we face one more problem and that is mti and what is mti when we are talking about mti mtis mtis mother tongue influence so mtis mother tongue influence so what is mother tongue influence when we are talking about mother tongue influence guys in india when we see in india we have multiple languages spoken we have east west north south and accordingly they have as per their language they have their as per your mother tongue you have that you know because we daily talk that at home majority time we use our mother tongue the language and so what happens is we have that influence when we are speaking english or any other language so mother tongue influence is counted because when we are speaking english we get that tone you would come across such people when you daily in routine meet, meet people you would see that uh, when a south indian is speaking he is getting that uh, that mother tongue influence a north indian speaking has accordingly so that would be observed because as per our mother tongue we would have the dominance of our mother tongue on 
the language English and that is how it again or any other any language that we are communicating because that is not a routine language, our routine language is different and we are speaking another language. So, we would have that mother tongue influence. Then apart from that guys, we should have when we are talking of mother tongue influence and other things, we should even have clarity of speech. So, clarity of speech is again very important because what we are speaking, fine that word has to be clearly spelt out. Many you know with mother tongue influence and other things when we are talking about in communication we have you know when we say as per the vowels and consonants when we, when we will come across to that, they have that sh, z, v, like you know uh, those pronunciation problem the clarity in the word does not come because they have the dominance of that plus many of them if you come across their speech is not clear their tongue is uh, like not in a proper way going touching to complete the word. So, they do not have the clarity in speech like the sh, z words when we call and uh, the v all those consonant vowel words even have their dominance and accordingly you would get this the non clarity in the words. So, when you do not have the clarity of the word you would not have the clarity of the speech. So, you need to have the clarity of the speech, you need to have the clarity of the words only then that your verbal communication is perfect. Otherwise, yes again I would say is opposite person will understand the way the person wants to understand, it need not be the way we want to give it, fine. So, I would say is let us give our best, let us take care of our speech completely, our tone quality, our voice quality, our rate of speech, our MTI, everything. So, please be careful about these parts because these are important in verbal communication. And guys, now when we are talking about, secondly we come is with written communication. When we are talking about the written communication, written communication is again a mode of communication in which it is might be then verbal, it is more professional. Because it has to be more professionally and polishedly used and again it has to be simple and sweet like the KISS acronym that we are following, we would be following it in this specially because any message that we have to convey, we have to write it, mail, memo, anything officially when we are using, we would be using our written communication. So, in written communication specially, written communication is most mostly used in it is an official way of communication and it is used in majority of business. Fine, this is it is like the business or official form, business or official form of communication is written communication. So, when we are talking about written communication, Again, like when we are talking about fine memos, then reports, mails, mails if we call it email or even the postal mail, this is all this all comes under written communication. Mail if we are talking even it is both postal and email. Fine, email and postal both are both come under written communication. And when we are talking about employee manuals, the memorandums, fine, our daily reports, all these things even come under written communication. So, when we are talking about it is a business and official form of writing. 
so it has to be professional the language which is being used writing specially has to be in a proper language appropriate language which is professional and again it has to be short and sweet fine apart from this when we are looking further so when we are talking about in nutshell the verbal communication it is both the written and spoken the mail shooting email writing whatsapp and all those when we are talking about those are internal communication it is the method of internal communication these methods are called internal communication because we being at one place even the opposite person being at other place we just need to type a message or a mail it goes official form and the ones in which we have courier that we send or written documents the postal documents that we are sending all those registers and all those things those are external communication so again in written communication even we have two ways internal and external communication which we would take care of fine and accordingly but that is again both the ways are official ways of communicating so now guys we would proceed further with we would now proceed further with non verbal communication non verbal communication so when we are talking about non verbal communication what is non verbal communication you know non verbal communication is in which words are not used person doesn't speak doesn't write but you understand what the person is doing and that is through their posture their body language their eye contacts that we understand and that is non verbal communication and uh, trust me uh, like uh, what officially and i think even our seniors or our elders they ever like they ever had mentioned it that sometimes words don't say what their body language says their posture says and uh, might be okay give me let me give you an example we go for an interview we have studied about us completely all those that we have to give the interview of we have studied it we have thoroughly thoroughly butterfied it or mugged it we have gone we give our interview accordingly but you know how does the person know that he is tensed he is scripted he is what he is telling is out of the way ask a question he will not be able to answer properly this thing one this one point goes but why because our body language shows it to them that if the person is tensed not properly prepared so what happens they know how to sometimes it happens is they know how to get the truth out of the person ask out of the syllabus question yes the person will be disturbed and we will then come to know is he prepared for this questions but otherwise you ask him he will not be able to answer so your body language shows them that that you lack confidence fine you lack confidence or you are not when we are talking about guys when we are talking about non verbal communication that yes what to say how a person is that communicates us to know about the person apart from that when we talk about like through non verbal communication even how would we know from what culture the, has the person come and so various things are apart from that that we can know that is apart from all this main points if we are talking fine apart from this points that we can know is from the dressing again dressing find your self grooming 
so dressing self grooming how you present yourself presentation so this things help us out in again you know understanding without speech fine again this is come in this communication has told us a lot about the person apart from the per, what the person speaks and uh, like to be to be said sometimes non verbal speak communication speaks more than the verbal communication this is what uh, logically people say philosophers say and whoever has done the survey research whatever this is what is proved is non verbal communication speaks a lot than verbal communication fine so again when we are getting into when we are talking about non verbal communication when we are talking about non verbal communication we have three elements three elements fine and these are of non verbal so when we are talking about the non verbal communication it has three elements first body language second sounds and when we are talking about the third it is the appearance fine so when we are talking about the body language body language sound and appearance so first let's take the body language how do we understand with the body language that what the person see you know uh, when we meet someone we when we get into the place and when we see someone is sitting fine we like the person is the way the person is sitting doesn't look official we say or it looks official someone who has come for the interview and the way the person sits not only interview even if otherwise when we say when you meet someone the way you sit way you carry yourself that is counted a lot lot that is your body language that shows about talks about you that how many many times we see someone and we say really the person looks like a gentleman how can we pass this comment he didn't even open his mouth it's because of his body language your body language speaks a lot about you your confidence level your body language speaks a lot about your confidence the way your eye contact with the person is that comes under your body language when you are talking uh, if you should have seen some people have a habit when they talk they cannot they don't see into the eye of a person they like keep the eye they eye sight down and they speak they don't do eye contact with the person again when someone who is studying the body language would understand the person is not self confident the person is not confident he is lacking confidence he or she is lacking confidence so again guys please your body language carry yourself your eye contact your gesture everything has to be such that your body language is given into a positive way it is presented in a positive way that person whoever is understanding you should have an very positive impression about you that here this person is someone yes who looks confident presentable really good a gentleman so your body language speaks about you you didn't open your mouth but yes first glance a person has given this many uh, feedback about you or thoughts about you fine then we are when we are uh, talking about sounds when we are talking about sounds again in sounds when we talk the volume that we speak fine volume then your voice tone 
your volume you know a volume uh, if it is low it shows you have low energy level fine if your volume is loud and clear not too loud again loud and clear in a moderate uh, this thing that again shows yes the person is energetic well to go but if you again speak too loud looks like he is arrogant he is too loud he is arrogant he like he might you know we we start pursuing he might be getting angry too fast he is short tempered so again this things come with your our presentability people assume about us by our non verbal communication that is sound again fine then the way we speak even is very important so how we speak it shows our upbringing our culture and i'm sure you know you would you all would agree with this point that the way we if we are soft spoken it's understood that yes the person is more civilized more cultured then uh, the person who is harsh or not soft spoken fine who is like loud at words and action fine so these things again give your perceptions so let people not carry wrong perception about us then yes appearance when we are when we are talking about appearance this person is with a casual attitude so communication without you doing anything this is what it speaks about you that is your dressing the cosmetics that you wear what all and how you are dressed up even that is your appearance fine how you have combed your hair many people you know they like they don't comb their hair properly they go with shabby hair or too much oil in their hair and then they go so this few things are observed when you are professionally carrying yourself or personally carrying yourself everything is noted that yes how the person is people start pursuing according to your appearances and when we are talking about appearances it is not only that our personal appearance apart from that even apart from the personal appearance there is that what is taken care of is your room room fine room size your surroundings your surroundings and the environment everything again comes into the appearance fine like example i would take is how uh, how would we relate with this things you are taking a selfie of yours fine but the light the way it falls on you it's glaring it appears dark your photograph comes dark so do you think the appearance is proper no so that is again that speaks is the photograph is not proper it's not taken properly that it's again communicated something that is a non verbal communication so even this you know the lightings and everything those two come under appearances and that is non verbal communication fine then when we are looking into types of communication based on purpose and style so again when we are talking about communication the type of communication based on the purpose and style so how would we understand this the purpose and style our festivals come fine 
different region, different festivals we have. Indians, we Indians are seriously blessed to have this thing that we have different culture going on. So, based on our different culture, different tradition, different festivals, different region, we have our appearance accordingly, according to the purpose and according to the latest style and trend, again we carry ourselves. Fine, so when we are talking about that, according to the purpose, according to the situation, why? Because we again into this thing when we are talking about this type of communication based on purpose and style, we have two categories, two categories in the sense, again we have first is formal communication and second one is informal con con communication. So, when we are talking about formal and informal communication, what is the difference and how is it different? Why have we to carry ourselves in two different ways? Why have we to do that? Two different show off if we call it or two different way of presentation we call it, but that is needed according to the time, according to the requirement we have to present ourselves and keep ourselves accordingly. So, that it gets the feel of the work, it, whatever purpose that we are doing, it gives us the feel of that. Suppose if I have come to office, college with the dress that I wear at home in the day or night in my casual dressing if I come off to college, do you think it would really look official or presentable? No, let it be students or teacher, it does not look presentable, it does not look official, it looks like even you would not get the feel, you will not get the feel of studying, you would again have that laziness in you, your body only feeling that yet yet I am into a comfort zone of mine. That feel does not come, it does not make you understand that yes, get up, it is now time to work, you are at college, you are at school, you are at office. So, accordingly you have to carry yourself presentably, officially. Formal communication, formal communication when we are talking, there are certain rules that are followed, there are certain rules that are followed while formal communication, fine certain rules, see formal communication occurs in formal and official way. So, in elaboration with this when I am talking about it in detail, formal communication when you are talking about verbal communication or non-verbal how would it be carried in an official and a formal way? First point this is, so when we are talking about a formal communication, our language that we are using has to be highly official, sophisticated, again short and simple, words have no, no slangs can be used, no slangs, what are slangs? Like we use o, k, ya, those are the slangs. You cannot use slangs in a formal language, fine. And uh, I would like you all to know one thing, you can do the research on this. Other languages, uh, other languages Sanskrit or all, all the regional languages that we talk, no other language apart from, from English has slangs, English has maximum slang, slangs, has slangs basically I would say, fine. So, slangs cannot be used and apart from that, first is your language has to be formal and official 
way of talk, way of communication, way of talking or or presenting. Fine. And again when we are looking into official dressings, settings, official settings, professionalism, fine, meetings, conferences, if we are talking official settings, meetings, conferences, presentability is different when compared to a non-formal this thing. See, when we are getting into the meeting again our present, our way we present ourselves has to be different and when it is, when we are talking about unofficial way, we might not, but when we meeting and daily routine of our formal communication, not the casual one. And third is, as I already said, no slangs and foul language. So, no slangs, no foul language will be used. Like as we say, hey, come here. I cannot use such language. That is slang. Or even the foul language using bad words, unofficial words, disrespecting words. This cannot be used for our formal places. I cannot call even the pure working here that with a bad word or badly addressing because this is an official atmosphere. We are supposed to be professional, we have to carry ourselves highly professionally. So, informal these things, you cannot use slang or foul languages. Then correct pronunciation correct pronunciation is required. Why? Because let me take the example here, if I was teaching you something, if I am teaching you something and if I am not using correct pronunciation, if I am adding a false accent, suppose US accent, UK accent and teaching you accordingly, would you understand it? No. Why? Because we are into a different uh, culture, we would not easily understand. So, let us have, let's have a neutral language where everyone can understand. So, our pronunciation has to be accordingly that everyone can understand us, what we are speaking, our message can be clearly passed, fine. Then, mainly when I would talk about, let us talk about authority lines, uh, authority lines, authority lines are used and are supposed to be followed in the formal language, fine, authority lines are, uh, it, those lines, authority lines are when some statement is passed, fine, 15th August is a national holiday that is again an authority line which has been passed and it has to be followed it cannot be changed Self, till further notice an official notice that cannot be and this can happen only with the formal communication and not an informal because when a statement is passed 15th August it will be a national holiday throughout India everyone be anywhere in any region has to follow that. So, such are the examples anywhere even in the office and work culture that we are working when some authority lines are passed those have to be followed till further notice. So, again in formal communication we have those authority lines which have to be followed. Fine, we do not follow all those things what are told in formal. When it is informal, it is informal. And in informal, it is not that we are meeting or talking to official people. We talking in a family even is an, in a, is an informal way of talking because we are at home, we are at our ease, we are, we are with our people. So, we are in a comfort zone. So, we talk in a casual language. 
we do not follow formalities. So, it is not a formal language. And second thing is exactly when we are looking into for informal language, in informal language few things are not followed which are followed in the formal language, fine. Like formally you cannot use slangs foul language, but in informal language you all you have liberty to speak the way you want till the opposite person does not object because you are talking with your friends, your near and dear ones, fine your family, friends, near and dear ones. But when you are talking in the in a formal atmosphere, you are talking to your official people, your official friends, our colleagues, but they are official, remember that, fine. So, again we have to be formal, but when informal, yes, you can, there are no restrictions that you cannot use foul language or slangs. You, you are how you both, you are comfortable with the group, you have liberty to speak accordingly and work out accordingly. And we were talking about authority lines, there are no such authority lines in informal communication, fine. Anything spoken can be changed because it is your mutual understanding and that is your personal relationship and not official, but official it cannot happen. So, that becomes formal. So, in informal you have that liberty, fine. So, this is the difference in formal and informal communication, fine. Then further proceeding, yes. Now, when we are looking into, let us look into the, let us look into few more part of, uh, few more points of informal communication. In informal communication, in informal communication, it is completely, first point is, completely opposite of formal communication, fine it is completely opposite of formal communication and it is, it is more a casual talk than official, it is, it is completely casual talk and casual way of talking, this is not formal. Then when we are looking into Okay, uh, this is more a socialized way of talking. If we are talking about informal communication, it is more the, social, in so, uh, the socialized way of talking when you are meeting your near and dear ones, your family, your friends, your gathering. So, that time it is again an informal way because all with different mindset and uh, personality meet. And again as it is not an official meet, there can be the way you are wanting to talk, you have liberty to speak and expression, like you have the liberty of speech and expression because it is a casual form. But in official we cannot, the way I want to talk I cannot talk to my colleagues, my people working with me, I cannot address them the way I want, no I have to be official, but over here. It is the most socialized way of talk, the, uh, communicating and this, this happens moni, mostly among friends and family or the near and dear ones, fine in near and dear ones, near and dear ones, fine. So, accordingly we can work it out for this thing, okay. And again guys, when we are talking about, this has more of, it is more done orally and with gestures, fine. Like when we all, we, we meet our people, we like you know, uh, when we are into our, in our in Indian tradition, when we are following, when we meet our people, we hug them and meet, we fall feet we pat each other, we tap each other and it is like how close our relationship is accordingly we are meeting. This is all an informal way of communication, it is an informal way of meeting and this is how that we would go with. So, help you in a better presentation of yourself, 
how to present yourself better, how to be more confident, how to be more official, how to be more cultured and wherever you go, you carry an X factor, a different image, an impression that you put on others. That is very important and especially these things, if you have really understood well, that would actually help you. This communication, this part of communication helps you in giving a very good presentation and a presentability of yours. People will recognize your presentation, Re people will recognize you. So, at least when in even in non-verbal when we are communicating, wherever we go, let us leave an impact, let us leave an image. Find that yes, whoever it is like, okay, so and so person, they remember. Let us end it up, have a great day. In further next class, we would learn in detail all about process of communication that how the whole process is in detail that we would study and that would really help you in even performing better in your type of communication. That would again give your communication more better way, fine. So, hope you all do well, all the best. Oh,